um, so then they Madeline, moved in. Madeline, that was her name. There you go. Sister they moved in with mother. Grandma's sisters, right? They Is moved it? in. Or back into the family home. Yes, when the father died, right. they moved back. And Grandpa Malloy was still alive right. when they moved back. But I think that he died shortly after. Not too long. I, I never knew the number of years, but not too long after they moved back into the little house on Brooklyn Street. Mm -hmm. And Aunt Loretta and Aunt Marcella and Aunt Peggy. And I think Uncle Tony was already married to Aunt Marion when they moved back. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, swear on that in a stack of Bibles, but I think so. And then Marcella came to New York, and Peg married Jim Anderson, and she moved to New York. But Loretta stayed home and sort of took care of things. And she used to go away to these um, resorts, real fancy resorts, Boca Raton, really very expensive resorts. And as a chambermaid, she started out. She used to send all her money home to help take care of the family. Because they were very poor. Mm -hmm. Very poor. Um, and because Grandma was married, I think, when she was about 18, so she never had a trade. She never had anything. Uh, so, uh, but Aunt Loretta, she was... Uh, remember her? Mm -hmm. She clucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can still hear. <laughs> But and her bark, she used to. Aunt Marcella used to laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. But Loretta was the. She was the backbone of the family. Mm -hmm. She really was. But uh, that's about you know all I know. So when Daddy was about fifteen or so, he moved. No, he went, when he, he came to New York to work summers, the nuns used to let him leave. Uh, he left school the day school closed, but the nuns knew the family needed the money, right. so they let him stay until October. They oh, let I him see. stay in New York till October. So he went to live with his aunt. He now, lived with Aunt Peggy. And how old was he when he started doing that? He was 15 years old. 15 and what? And at 15 years old, he was thrown in Donald's age, mm -hmm. Brian's age. Yeah. He was thrown in with rough Tough, as a steam fitter's helper. Mm -hmm, an apprentice. Mm -hmm. yes, right. And he worked every summer during every summer during summer vacation mm -hmm. from the time he was fifteen. Until he became a full fledged steam fitter. Okay. And they, they had no school then. When Uncle Bill when Uncle Bill became a steam fitter, they had school. They had classes that they took, and then they worked, and they, you mm -hmm. know, part of it was no such thing when the father became a student. Mm -hmm. But he worked, you know, he worked from the time he was very, he was very young. It's, I'm sure, sent most of his money home. Every bit. Right. Every bit. And just live with his aunt. Live with Aunt Peg down mm -hmm. Randall Manor. Mm -hmm. And uh, sent every bit of his money. And did most of his work in Manhattan. Yeah. All. Yeah. His, well, he, well, he was. He, you know, we, we did industrial Steam heating, thing. heating and right. air conditioning, and, but it was industrial. Right. He couldn't fix a refrigerator. Right. You know. But if it was a huge. Oh yeah, <coughs> it was a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did, he did you know, things like he did the UN building and, and the, 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 the Empire State building. He did air conditioning in the Empire State, but and big stuff mm -hmm. and the and the. And the warehouse, not the warehouse, the slaughterhouse, where he lost his taste for red meat. Mm -hmm. That lasted almost a year. The slaughterhouse in Jersey. So that that's the kind of big work. industrial job. Big industrial right. job. Okay, well let, let's jump back to your family now. So you're a young woman. You have a daughter, or you have a sister, Mildred, a brother, John, and your mother lost. A son? Billy. Billy. Yes. I think he was about I think he was about eighteen months old. Now would he have been your oldest brother? Yes, he was he was born on my father's birthday. Okay. March twenty third, he was born on my father's birthday. And he got he had actually had um, spinal meningitis. And one day 
he was fine. The next day he was sick and running a temperature. Three days later he was dead. Mm -hmm. But they told my mother that had he lived, he would have been crippled, and, you know, mm -hmm. in, in bad shape. Okay. Now your dad died when you were eight? Nine. Nine. Yes. And he had a heart attack? Yes. Well, he'd had a heart, he'd had one heart attack uh, when he was uh, around Thanksgiving, and he went back to work uh, a couple of days, the week before Christmas. He should, he, actually, probably he should have stayed quiet long, but he had a heart attack by Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And he was 40, he was 47 years old. 47, man. So at that point, was your mom working? She was already working. Full time? She had been full, yes. As she was an investigator for the Department of Hospital. Right. And she worked full time, and Keys was, was at home. living with you. Okay, right. so she had somebody to watch the it kids. Was somebody home. And yes. she continued to work. Now, did you have to move as a result of your father's death? It was like a loss of that income? No, we lived on Ridgewood Place. Place and you stayed there. We, yeah, we did have to move, but we had to move because the people who owned the house, we only rented the house. Right. On one side of Mrs. Brown's house, one side of Ridgewood Place we lived, and then the people wanted the house back, the Chipolas, they owned the house. So we temporarily moved to a house down on Castleton Avenue, uh, right across from Saint, old St. Vincent's Hospital. Mm -hmm. But we only lived down there for about a year. And then Mrs. Brown called us and said that the house on the other side of her was for rent, but she liked us. We were the only kids on the block she liked. Oh, okay. And I think we that lasted all her life hmm. because the Blaine boys say she was the nasty woman on the block who wouldn't let them go in and get their ball, mm -hmm. or their ball, but she would let us play in her yard. Ah, okay. And so we lived, we lived at 109 Ridgewood Place on the other side. Uh, until we moved to the apartment, you know, all through most of grammar school mm -hmm. and and all through high school. It wasn't until after high school that we moved to 131 Silver Lake Road, the apartment. Okay. Now at this at this time, Aunt Mildred was living in Brooklyn. Is that correct? Oh no, Aunt, Aunt, oh no, Aunt Mildred was no, Aunt Mildred <coughs> never lived on Staten Island. Oh, no, but didn't she live oh, in Brooklyn? No, no. No, no, I, I, no, Aunt Mildred. Aunt Mildred Chapel. Yeah. Yes. No, she went to Saranac in 1926. Oh, okay. So you in were still, those days... You where did she go from to go to Saranac, though? Where did oh, she, she live? Oh, she lived in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, okay. Yes, yeah, she okay. lived at Albemarle Street, I think she All right. lived in Brooklyn. So she got sick when you were about five then, right? Five or six? Yeah, I had to be. Okay. I had to be. So your dad was still alive when she went to Saranac to cure? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And she, uh, she, um... It, it, she got tuberculosis, but my grandfather died of tuberculosis, and Aunt Lizzie, who was Uncle Raymond's uh, mother, and Uncle George, Uncle George Baker, mm -hmm. she um, she died actually, well she had tuberculosis, but she died in childbirth, because Nana always remembers seeing her coughing with the little baby. In the oh, the coffin. baby died also? Oh, they, oh yeah, the baby yeah. died also. And she was very young, because she had she had come over from Ireland when she was a little girl, and had stayed with my nana and my grandfather from the time they were married. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she probably developed the tuberculosis from my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And then my nana didn't get it because she. You know, she they had opened the, the hand laundries on the east side, and it's one time she had to, she was really a remarkable woman because my grandfather was only in his thirties when he died. My grandfather did, right? and she had managed bought these laundries, hand laundries, and and uh, then she build it up, build up the business, and she'd sell it, and she'd open another one. Mm -hmm. So she was a remarkable woman. As a, real, a widow, she was a real businesswoman. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And, uh, 
All right, so Ann Mildred, when did you start going up to visit Ann Mildred up in Saranac Lake? Oh, well, the first, well, she wasn't allowed visitors. In fact, Jane while. and John were not allowed to live with her. Right. She was in the cure cottage. Yep. Uh, but they, they, Uncle Jack kept them in, in, out in uh, New Jersey for a while. And I guess when they were maybe 10 or so, because when she went away to Saranac Lake, um, I guess John was about John was about four, and, and Jane was about two. They were little little mm -hmm. kids. But when they were about ten, when they were about ten, then he moved them up to Saranac Lake to Mrs. Brannock's. And Mrs. Brannock took care of she was an RN and she took care of the ch children of. Uh, tuberculosis. Okay. Yes, there were five or six other kids mm -hmm. in the house. And the first time we went up, Uncle Jack sent sent us up, and it was not too long after my father died because we lived in that house on Castleton Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, for about I said about a year, year and a half. I don't know exactly how long. And it was then that he sent us up on a long weekend, and that had to be. It was after the, the Olympics, because I remember he had Mrs. Brannock rent a car to take us over to Lake Placid, that was Dodo and I, to take us over to Lake Placid to see where the, where the Olympics had been. So it was, well, my father died, what, 1930, I think the Olympics, Olympics were in 1930. 30. Yep. So this had to be 31, 1931 okay. or 32. Mm -hmm. Because I was maybe 11 or so. Okay. Uh, that was the first time. But then I didn't, Aunt Mildred used to come down to New York um, to have her lung blown up. It was a doctor. They didn't do it in Sarah Knight Lake. And she had to come down to New York maybe twice a year and have it blown up. Mm -hmm. But she didn't set up housekeeping until, uh, I guess I was in high school, and that's when I started going up. That had to be uh, about 1935. Okay. I graduated from grammar school in 35, so that had been the summer of 1935. But you went mostly in the winter, winter or in the summer? Well, I went up in the summer, and then I started to go up during Christmas vacation mm -hmm. also. And a couple of summers, I spent almost the whole summer up there. So. And you'd stay with the, with the Gran Mrs. Brannock? No, Mrs. Brannock <coughs> was long, oh no. Oh. Aunt Mildred had set up house. Oh, right, she is, she, she had a house. Saint Bern first she lived on St. Bernard Street. Mm -hmm. That was the first place she yep. lived, right across from the church. Yep. Uh, and then, then she, when Jane went away to college, uh, uh, and Jane and John were in the same class, so they both went to college at the same time. Mm -hmm. John had missed a whole year of school when he was, had scarlet fever. And um, so that she went, uh, then she moved up to Baker Street, 45 Baker Street, which was up behind, and ran, ran parallel with Park Avenue. That goes right into Trudeau, that's Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. And she lived up on Baker Street for quite a while. In fact, she lived up on Baker Street when Uncle, Uncle Jack had to retire because of his eye cancer. You know, he had the 